Hi, and welcome to our latest Book Reporter Talks to Interview. Today, I'm going to be interviewing Karen White, which I am so looking forward to. We've had so many conversations on the phone about yes. your books, but we haven't met in person. And we're going to be talking about the latest book in her Trad Street series. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to be talking about the upcoming books that she does in her series with uh, Beatrice Williams and Lauren Willick. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be an, a multifaceted interview. Yes, excellent. So welcome, Karen. Um, let's start with you telling us about the Trad Street series, because okay. I want to just hear more about where you came up with these books. Well, depending on who the audience is, so um, if you're around my age, you'll, you will get this reference. I call my Trad Street series, well, some people call them Nancy Drew for adults. I call them, they're my Sixth Sense meets National Treasure meets Moonlighting. Remember mm, the Moonlighting yes, series yes, back yes. in the... It moder if you're younger than I am, then probably Castle would be, you know, it's that sort of repartee between the detective and the... Um, so this, the main character is an um, OCD realtor who, in Charleston, South Carolina, who sees dead people and can communicate with them. But um, that's why she, she makes a living from selling these beautiful historic homes in Charleston, but she hates old houses because they always have a dead spirit who wants her help. Right. And um, so when they start talking to her, the way she sort of tries to block them out is she starts singing ABBA songs. So, <laughs> so she doesn't so, have to hear what they're doing. What exactly, they're exactly. So that's, she's, um, she's really grown and changed since the first book, which is fun, but she's, some, some people get annoyed with her, but you have to understand her background, you know, where she's coming from, why she is the way she is. And I think that's, that makes her even more charming because, because she has overcome a lot and that's how she's overcome it. By being a little weird. By being but, a little yeah. weird. A little bit different. Well, I was going, well I could, this is the first book that I've read, but I figured that since it was the Christmas spirit, yes. the mm -hmm. I could read it because it's a Christmas book right. you can read out of order, I felt. Right. But it was interesting because as I was reading it, I was picking up all the little, like I don't know everything about Melanie, but I was picking up all these little details. How hard is it to write all those little kernels so if you're picking up book six, right. you aren't lost? Right. Well, you know, I, I've been with Melanie since I wrote, the, I started writing the first book in 2005. Wow. So we're, we're like sisters now. <laughs> and a lot of people, and I'm not saying, not, neither confirming nor denying, but um, some people who read these books say that Melanie is me, but again, there may be some traits that we share. There are two little dogs running around. Yeah. <laughs> they're adorable. How when I talked to Karen on the phone, yeah. they're, they're, they're running around in her house too, yeah, so I think yeah. it's the, I get yeah. the dogs, yeah. yeah. And you know the the okay, so I'm I am familiar with a with a with a, um, a labeling gun, but I, I don't use it obsessively like like Melanie does. I don't organize. Well, okay, I haven't labeled the drawers. I've wanted to, you know, where you put the socks and stuff like that, but. But not, not yet. That, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. But you have a lot of writing to do. So yeah, that's exactly. the only thing that's keeping exactly. you from labeling. But because I know her so well, it's it, she's you know it's like describing your sister. You mm -hmm. know, you're you've been with her so long, you know her little funny you know characteristics. little things to drop in. Mm -hmm. Little little things to drop in. Mm -hmm. So it was okay. I started with the Christmas book, but you really recommend it to me. Reading the rest in order. I, I just really because do. you can see the evolution of Melanie. Mm -hmm. Because and and I I try to really a lot of people who readers will, will email me and say, oh, I don't, you know, I, I'm not a ghost book kind of person or thriller person or scary book person, but I picked up your book because my sister-in-law, whoever told me to read it, I love this book. Mm -hmm. Because yes, we, that the secondary plot lines are always about, you know, there's a ghost, there's that mystery trying to be solved, but these are still uh, character-driven books. Yes. It's it's the, it's Melanie. It's the growing cast of characters, and to see them in the book, first book, see her especially in the first book, see her grow and change and evolve, and this growing cast of characters kind of glom onto her life. That I think, and my readers uh, tend to agree, that is the joy of the series. Right. The rest of it is just icing on the cake. So. Um, I just love that she's seeing these dead people in the room. So she walks in a room and she's seeing a crowd right. and everybody else is just seeing one person right. in the room and she's right. like, oh, all these people, right. I don't want to go to sleep. Dancing I don't want to hear them. Yeah. I don't want to be able to, have to see what's going on. So when the first book came out in 2008, you started writing in 2005, came out in 2008, did you immediately see the whole arc of the story? Did you know where everything was going to go? No, and it's really funny because um, uh, people always say, well, where did this idea come from? And I literally, I was taking a shower and the character of Melanie Middleton knocked me upside the head. Um, so I knew it was gonna be a southern, a beautiful southern um, city, um, whatever, and I kind of knew the story. But um, when I first sold it, because I was writing, you know, I had one book a year, I was right, doing fine with right. one book a year, and this 
character hit me upside the head. I knew she saw dead people. I, you know, didn't really know much more about it because um, I'm not a big, I'm not a plotter. Um, and I wrote like the first three chapters and I sent it to my agent. She's like, this is very different, but I love it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, let me send it to your editor at Penguin. And, and, um, and luckily Cindy said, love it. But um, I think they were a little scared. They even wanted me to use a different name because they didn't mm -hmm. think the readers of my existing books would want well, these books, not realizing that these are still Southern women's fiction they books. They are, totally. Um, but um, they only wanted me to do two books. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I literally was in the middle of writing the second one when the first one came out. And, you know, my agent called and said, oh, they want, they want two more. And, or was it three more? They, but they wanted, they wanted more. 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 And every time, so I had to like redo that book so I could, and so every time I get to the end, <laughs> we want more. Like, okay, so I have to make up stuff. So I just started writing like um, epilogues in all the books, like where it could be a leaping off, like we'll just go where in we could case. go from there, just in case you had to keep going. Yeah. Because they didn't come out in consecutive years. No, it they was didn't. like let's see, it was like uh, 9, 11, 14, 17. So in between, right. you're right and now all 19, the standalones. And, and I don't 19. even know when the seventh one's coming out. So, right. but because yeah, with the publishing schedule and you know just trying to fit it in. Because remember, it's not just the publication; it's the writing time and oh, what yeah. else is going on. Right. Um, so that it just worked that way. And I, you know, I hate. I really hate it when people discover this series, um, you know, or when I discover a series on the first book. But see, now if you're jumping in, you're on book six already. I know, I know, but I will go back. Okay. Because I thought it was fun, and I, Charleston was such a terrific setting. Yes. And you really brought the city to light in a very different way, because I felt like, okay, so in this one, they're going to be doing this progressive dinner on this <laughs> tour, which I, I have admit, I've always wanted to do a progressive dinner. Now I'm not so sure anymore. But they're doing this progressive dinner, and it's going to be at her house, which she's really not that charmed about right, having at right. her house. And she's doing For various this, reasons. For yeah. various <laughs> reasons. Like, who else could come show up? <laughs> exactly. All the historical bodies that yeah. could be showing up at dinner, extra count on the mm -hmm. food, but or non-food. Mm. But um, as I was reading it, though, I felt like I was falling in love more and more with Charleston. Yeah. And I found myself going out and Googling all these different right, places in right. Charleston because there are streets that you're mm -hmm, actually mentioning. Mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. fact, in the week that we're going to air this interview, you actually have a Trad Street weekend yes. in Charleston. So yes. tell us what's that. There so it, the second time we did it, the first time we did it was with um, uh, this book, when this book came out, which was January of 2017, I believe. Yeah. And um, this amazing bookseller in Charleston, Polly Buxton of Buxton Bookstore, mm -hmm. Um, and and my publicist and I sort of thought, oh, everybody wants to go to Charleston because it is, it's an amazing, I've always had an affinity for it. I only found out recently that I actually had ancestors that lived on Trad Street and Broad Street. And, really? Yes. Oh, which, I know, which is very oh, Wait, whoa, 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 I see that. I know, <laughs> I I know right? And um, um, so we just thought, oh, because Charleston is such a destination, right? and these books are so quintessential Charleston, that it just seemed like a good idea. Why don't we have, uh, you know, some authors go on a cruise. Right. Instead, why don't I have my readers come to me and we'll like, you know, have these, you know, Charleston food, events, ghost tours. You know, but I see tours. that I was looking at the agenda and there are four different ghost tours. So mm -hmm. are you on all the ghost tours? No, or I think, what's going I think on I'm the ghost tours? On, I think I'm just going on one of okay. them. But um, one of the funny, it's a, it's a special um, treat for, for people who are going to the weekend is, so I don't know if you remember the character Megan Black. Yes. And these. yes. So, you know, my daughter is Megan White. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, what really deep for different names. Okay. <laughs> So that's basically my daughter. Oh, um, yeah. Everything. It, she's a caricature of herself. Uh, she's the one doing the excavation of the yes. cistern in the back, wearing her pearls and her her J Crew sweater. And that would be your daughter. That would be my daughter. Mm -hmm. So um, she's going to be at the Trad Street weekend as oh, a, gu a guest appearance. So yeah. a guest appearance, mm -hmm. Megan White for mm -hmm. Megan Black. Get it, get you know, it, yeah. I totally get it. So one thing I will also notice is there's lots of decorating in these books. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of decorating that goes on. I felt like I could see all the houses. Mm -hmm. You love doing this? Do you love decorating? It's or do you love decorating. writing? I'm just, I, I, I love these beautiful old houses. Yeah. And I love the way that they've been restored and put together. My, my daughter has a master's in historic preservation. And she actually has been a, a docent at, at mm -hmm. more than one of the historic homes. Right. We've done historic home tours. All I mean, and I just notice that the details I notice, mm -hmm. and um, that's why I'm just such a 
I'm an old house hugger. But you know, when you when I was reading, I felt like I was there. Mm -hmm. I really felt your description of place as well as character was so terrifically strong and I enjoyed it so much because I felt like as I was reading, I was completely caught up in all the details on the home. I felt mm -hmm. like I could see the lithilios, right. I could see whatever. Good. And it made it it really made it feel special. Good. It did. Good. And I think that that's and I do, I, I surround myself with I, there are some gorgeous coffee table books of Charleston interiors. Oh, okay. And I literally, I pick a house and I'm like, yeah, this is what I think this room looks like. And yeah, and it was really fun because Christmas and Charleston's beautiful any time of the year, but at Christmas is really special. So I really had fun decorating the house for Christmas. Oh yeah, you were definitely in the decorating. <laughs> in fact, that's what I was, I was writing down because all the decorations that were being of their you know being put up and including that the oranges are going to be um decorated with cloves yes okay and i forgot it's called something special yeah I, I i don't ask me yeah because yeah, i actually got the recipe from a revolutionary charleston during the revolution kind of whatever and um what what they might have decorated their mantles and stuff with well so. if i didn't have just one orange at home i was gonna bring oranges and cloves today oh, so you could man, teach me okay. how to do this with your ruler right. because of course she's ocd <laughs> yes. and the cloves go in at exactly, at exactly the right places yeah. and stuff like that yeah. so I was she's so much fun to write let I me tell you bet, I bet <laughs> but I also did love that she wanted to do the garlands on the staircases in plastic yes. because the other stuff dies yes. and it would become and like I a, totally get that you so totally get that I so totally are you that. okay so in your life are you original evergreens or are you using I'm the... 50 50 okay because I'm not going to torture myself right but I also love the real stuff mm -hmm. so we do 50 50 um, and my children when I went to an artificial Christmas tree yeah we my did children I like, didn't had didn't forgive me so finally the last three or four years we've gone we go to the tree. Christmas, and Christmas and it's you know a bazillion dollars and then <laughs> you're watering it and the dogs are like you know peeing on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah it's oh not my good. Gosh. Yeah. yeah, but also I think that like the leaves start the the uh, needles start falling on the tree. Oh the, my gosh. the year we went out and cut a tree for the first time, we went out and we cut the tree. We came home. And I swear, if I looked at the tree, the needles it, fell yes. off. And I was like, wait a second, this is supposed to be so special. That's supposed to be so good. We must have gotten the runt of the liver uh, wow. the yeah, liver the tree because yeah. it just kept. Everything kept well, falling you know, you off my tree. We have to water it like multiple times a day in the yeah. beginning, the first two weeks. Well, we started going to the Outer Banks for Christmas for a whole spate there, uh, yeah. and we would just carry the artificial tree in the car yeah, I don't because it was like you know so much easier. Yes, but I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Actually, last year I got an idea, which in the north is not a great idea of doing magnolia leaves in yes. a decoration outside. Oh, we do that at home. But try to find magnolia leaves in New Jersey oh. in November. So I was there because there's a hotel up the street that had this decoration. I thought it looked fabulous. These uh -huh. big. You spray paint them gold too. It's very gold? pretty. Gold. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. I have to go do that this year. Well, if I can find them ever again. Mm. So, but they were out there to like March because I, have some I was in my like, yard. I'll yeah. just have you. We'll just have to ship them up this year because it was like crazy. So setting as well as character is important. And as you're writing, are you? trying to get it all infused the same way? Or are you going back with details? Or do you, I mean, I know you have your books out in front of right. you in the front. I just, I feel it. Like I, I look at my pictures and then I just kind of, I don't know, um, I just absorb it and then I just put it Go out there. Go from there. Yeah. Like, and, and it helps because this is um, Melanie's point of view. It's first person, mm -hmm. you know, singular. That's, it. She's the only narrator, so I'm literally seeing things through her eyes. So I see things like how she would see them and notice them, which I think helps portray yes. the the character and the uh, the characters and also the setting, um, all the little details and things like that. Because she's seeing that and noticing it, right? And she's making a wry comment in her head about mm -hmm. it that you can actually write, which you don't have to sit there and start explaining how right. somebody else feels, mm -hmm. which I really really liked. Um, I, we see, yes, I definitely see a bit of you, Melanie, and you. Yeah, the little small dogs were a dead giveaway. I will just say that right now. And they're like these little nuggets. The audiobooks in the series, because I went and listened to some audio clips, uh, yeah, okay. uh -huh. are, inter are all narrated by the same woman, Amy um, Brunel. Amy Brunel, mm -hmm. right. Did you pick the narrator at the beginning? I or did, did you not. I her? did not. And um, I... Thank goodness, um, she has been able to do all of them, and she's also doing this, this one. This one, yeah. Uh, which I'm thrilled about because I'm an avid um, audiobook oh, yeah. listener because I'm driving and traveling all the time. And um, nothing quite throws a listener out of the story when there's a new narrator mm -hmm. for a first person character. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, um, Amy is 
is Melanie, you know, in, in the voice. Cause when, and when I first heard the first video clip from the first book, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's exactly how I picture Melanie sounding. Right. I mean, it was just, it was perfect. And I'm so glad that she's signed on to do this as well. Yes, because I went back and listened to excerpts of all of them mm -hmm. along the way, because I just want to get, it to, and it's exactly the way mm -hmm. she does it. Now, here's a question. When you finish writing your books, do you read your books aloud to oh, yourself? Oh gosh, gosh, no. You don't mm -hmm. read aloud to yourself? Because mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of authors are reading aloud these days for the reason that sometimes you hear you said a word like right. too many times because right. since digital audio right. has become so big. Right. Yeah, but I am betting because you're an That's audio, but I'm betting because you're an audio listener. It might write, just be ingrained. I, I might. You probably it, write differently because you're used to the cadence possibly, of what yeah. you're hearing. Yeah. Cause, cause I, you know, like I'm reading it in my head, you know, and I get that. Um, because if you're really listening to audiobooks, you listen completely differently you, than the way we oh, read, and you hear any little nuance. Mm -hmm. And if there's any words used too word much, that you use, oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I've heard of authors that said that they're at readings and they're editing the book. Like oh as my gosh, at the, yes. at, the, at the podium, it's like hmm, I think it would sound better if we weren't do this. <laughs> oh, you that's know, hilarious. Yeah, no, I get it. So we've got six. Is there a seventh book coming? Of course. So book? you saw how the book ended. Yes. Okay. Well, cliffhanger. That's yes. all you're saying. Cliffhanger. So, yeah. Well, yeah. That's yeah. That's all we can say. But yes, there will definitely be. Okay, good. Has there to has be. to be because we were just. Yeah. Otherwise, people, I'm gonna get rotten tomatoes thrown at me at book signings. Well, so. the people at your publisher were like, "Wait to get the cliffhanger," and I was like, "Okay, I guess I have to start reading faster." And they were like, "Yeah, I wrote back and I was like, yes, you're right. Great cliffhanger. <laughs> oh, really, really good. Is that the last, or you don't know?" It's supposedly the last. So mm. what I will probably do is do an epilogue just, just in case. But you know, now that some of the secondary characters are older and they have some of the, their their own mm -hmm. lives okay. or whatever, I can kind of see, you know? I mean, maybe Nola takes over her grandparents' antique store, you right. know? And I don't know. Let's see, you know, and the little twins, one of them might have the gift. Might have the gift. It might be seen, you know. But I think it's funny when you walk in a room and you see many more people than are actually in the room. <laughs> that has got to be yeah. so terrifying. And who are these people? Right. And then realizing certain things that are going on in these right. homes. Right. I think it's, it's And no, true. I'm not psychic. I don't see dead people. But you don't, I don't I have, know. I want to. But I have to tell you, I am not somebody who really loves Supernatural. Mm -hmm. I don't like ghosts. Mm -hmm. But I still completely understood the story. Mm -hmm. It seems like you have a love of history as of well. Of course. And yeah. it... Looking like the, the historical, what's in the backyard? I mean, living in this t this city, it's got to be completely different because you don't oh, know yeah. what was in the backyard. Right, right. And you're dropping in all these clues, but it's clear you loved history and you like writing about it in a uh, very fluid way instead of a very like you know scholarly kind right, of a thing. Right. Even though a lot of what they're doing is scholarly yeah, to try to figure yeah, out what's going on. Yeah. Um, and this book, of course, the the mystery harkens back to the revolution, mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't think. Charleston Revolution. They had oh my gosh, they you know the siege of Charleston. It was it was a big deal, and um, uh, you know yeah you know patriots were. I had my ancestors in Charleston. One was a patriot and one was a Tory. Um, interesting. Same Civil War. Same thing. You know wow. two sides. Two yeah. sides. Just like my family can never <laughs> make up their minds. Um, but um, so I loved, you know, and because and, I, I think it's cool when people you read, you learn something when you read a novel, you know, it is. And, and so delving it's much in, better than history, dry yeah, history. Exactly. Books. So you know, delving into the revolution in Charleston it was really fun, and that was a, a real treat. Um, and now you also know how um, people during the revolution decorated their mantles in Charleston. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yes, because we were going to be period correct. We were yes. going to do all these period correct Because her best friend, you know, when Melanie in the first book inherits her house on Trad Street, she looks at it and thinks like, oh my gosh, there's so much that needs to be done with it. It, it would be better, this lot would be better served as a parking lot, which of course you can't do in downtown Charleston. But her best friend is a professor of historic preservation at the College of Charleston, Sophie Wallen, who, uh, right. Rossi, who right. um, is in this book as well. And they're so opposite, but... Um, you know, Sophie's always, you know, wants everything to be, you know, the old way. Like, you know, when when Melanie wants to paint a wall, Sophie's like, I'll send you the recipe to boil chestnuts and whatever to get the right. And, and Melanie's like, no, I'm just going to the Sherwin-Williams. Yeah, let's match, match this color. Yes, let's exactly. match what's going on. But you think about what you can do now with matching color mm -hmm. that you never used to oh be able gosh, to do. And right. you can go in and say, hi, I have this little swatch of thread. Right. Can you please make right. me paint? Or this little chip that fell off my door. Yeah. Right, right. It's incredible. Yes. Like in our office where they're going to be touching up after what they painted. Yeah. And we're putting in the sprinklers. That. Good luck. I don't think it's going to work. Besides this, you've written 19 standalones. 
19 something standalone. like that yeah something mm -hmm, 19 standalones mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is there a little bit of freedom in writing a standalone after writing a series book or is there like oh dear sitting down on the page there's no guidebook yeah it's writing standalones are very difficult they mm -hmm. they've always been hard they don't get any easier the thing that i love writing the series i call them my palate cleansers okay because even though there's some serious stuff going on in them there's so much humor, you mm -hmm. know, and I put a little bit of humor in all my books, but my standalones are much more serious and, you know, darker toned. Um, and writing Jack and Melanie, you know, and the banter and just some of the stuff is, I mean, I, I hope you I'm find not yourself very, laughing. Yeah, I You find yourself up. laughing. I have a funny feeling. You know? <laughs> laughing at your ear, like, ha, ha, ha. You're like, ah. Um, so um, I, it's a real palate cleanser. I find it really refreshing. And like, I know the book, so I'm, Finishing up one book, a book that comes out in 2021, a standalone, and as soon as I finish these edits, the next book I have to write is book seven in the series. I look forward to it because it is like, you know, you know how you visit your family once a summer? Right. That's how this is. It's like, oh, I get to see them again, you right, know, and, right. and I mean, it's still hard. I still have to come up with a plot. But you're still thinking about, oh, I, I could do this in the house. I could do this here. I could do this there. That And I know Charleston so well. I know these characters. It's like when you start a standalone, it is a blank page. Mm -hmm. When I start one of these, like it's not written, but there's, you know, I know my characters. I know Charleston. I know the house. I know it, there's so and and plus the you know one of the mysteries that have been in the last two books will be resolved in this final book. Okay. So I already know. I just have to go back and read the earlier two books, so I'll know what clues I put in. What little so breadcrumbs did I drop along the way for myself? Because to sit I there do and forget. Yeah. I literally have to go back and read. And I actually at one point. Um, paid someone to read all of them and do like a trad street bible mm -hmm. so i would know eye color you know car they drove where they went to school what what are their interests that kind of thing they do that on sitcoms because if you're going to go through to. nine seasons exactly what did they ever do oh she had blonde hair back here reference that what right. was going on and right. it's if not and it's called the bible and it's so you have everything that's yes. going on because there are all those little details and the readers will pick up on it oh it my be this gosh crazy yes thing. they do yes, and if it's do. not right it won't be you know it won't be the same. Mm -hmm. So you were first published in 2000, right. which was, you know, almost 20 years at this point. Have you been writing? Oh, my gosh. I know. What's changing your writing at this time besides I'm sure you have more confidence in your writing? Um, no, I wouldn't say that. Mm -hmm. um, and I really, ugh. when I go back and read my other books, I, I do realize my writing has become tighter mm -hmm. and cleaner. Mm -hmm. And I think each book is better than the last. But when I had, um, I had the opportunity nine years after my first book was published to republish it. Um, so they let me go back and clean it up and whatever. And I realized that, you know, this was a pretty good book. The story is really cool. Mm -hmm. But the writing, you know, definitely needed to be cleaned up. It wasn't awful, but it was not to the caliber I think that I write now, which right. is nice. Um, but I still approach every book the same way I, I approached writing that book. I don't think about what came before or what might come next or how it might be received or who might read it or like it or whatever. I just write a book that excites me mm -hmm. and it's the kind of book I'd want to read. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I want characters I can care about that are, that are flawed, that some, you know, um, are they redeemable? Maybe, you know, that they're very close to not being redeemable. Um, but I need them to be understood, you know, from where they've been. And I, I like those complex characters. And I think my characters have gotten more complex mm -hmm. as, as, as I've gone along. And I think that makes them a more interesting read because the reader doesn't always know what choice they're going to make. And it's my job to make sure that the reader understands what that choice, you know, why they, why they, whether it's a good choice or bad, like exactly. why they went and why it. they're doing it. And, mm -hmm. um, um, so, so yeah, so even like when I start this next book or when I start my next standalone, it's, it's always with, I just clear my head and I just try to focus on that one story because you can't like, oh, where am I going to hit on the New York Times? I just, I can't go there because it, it mm -hmm. drives, it, there's the things you can't control and the things you can't. Right. And I can't, I can't focus on things I can't control because mm -hmm. it's, it's. 
um, I use this in, I can't remember which book I use it in, um, you know, worrying about things you can't control a lot like sitting in a rocking chair, you know, keeps you busy, but it doesn't get you anywhere. Ah, good so. line. Very good line. And you know what it is? Because so many times a book will not hit the New York Times list because mm -hmm. of the time of year it came out. Right. Or whatever. No, a million there, reasons. A million, mm -hmm. a million different things but can happen. But it still sells well. But it sells really, really well and mm -hmm. you build readership. Right. And I think there are other benchmarks. I think that right. readers I go, agree. I think that authors need to look more at how fans are receiving their books. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. what they're saying. And I know when I was reading this, I was completely swept up in the story. And I read a lot. I mean, I, I read a lot. Right. So for me to be sitting there saying, I'm coming in on book six here, but I am so interested in these characters mm -hmm. and the place, and I want to book a trip to Charleston. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I can't be the weekend that Dang, you're going. Yeah. I know I'm doing a different festival that mm -hmm. weekend. But it was, it was just really nice to be able to sit there and say, I'm so caught up in this story, even though I'm coming in so late. And right. the characters were so robustly drawn mm -hmm. and a lot of times I think that people are not doing that they're mm -hmm. just not it's like you know they're like they're, paper dolls just they're kind of paper being dolls moved. Yeah. and the, and the buildings also are really something that are it's not something that's going to stand out now granted you're dealing with something historic right, but, right. but by the same token I felt got a real feel for mm -hmm. the town for sitting mm -hmm. or the city mm -hmm. for sitting there and looking and at it and I know it. this house you know very well I've, I've lived in it you know for for what? what since 2005 yeah wow so there is this is an actual home that you, you have the, gone the down to side of the house is and the inside is borrowed from other houses okay so, so but so my fictional house I see it in my I see it in my head you right. know it's like do you it's, like houses oh, you I, love you love old houses but I you do. love houses have you have you noticed that all of my books this there's a, uh, the center point is an old house yes Yes, it's yeah. completely, and you live in an old house? No. No, it's like, no, it's the dream. <laughs> no, but you don't want to have to do all those repairs. I mean, I, I like guess, copper I pipes. Know, I know, I know. Copper pipes. My that. husband no, no. hates old houses, and I can't, I can't use, it's a, it's a, a bad word, but, um, you know, whenever I said, I'm like, oh, look at that house, it's for sale. Like, I'll send him Charleston Real Estate. He's like, he always says the same thing, and I actually have Melanie use it in the first book, because she hates old houses. Right. You know, she grows on her. But, um, you know, it's a beep to heat, you know. Right, and, right, and, yeah. You know, and so I have her actually saying that, so. Yeah, it's a, that's the kind of stuff that happens along yeah. the way with those old houses. Did you live in Charleston at any point, or did you just never, visit? Never, just visit? never, okay. never, yeah. At some point, though. And the first time I visited, I was like, oh, I felt like I was home. It was really weird. That's... Well, there's something in that background. I know, I'm you see those you. people hanging around the room. I'm huh? telling you. <laughs> it's like, well, so in addition to writing the solo books and also writing the series, there wasn't there's enough in my spare for you time. to do. In your spare time, you started to write with Beatrice Williams and Lauren Willig, yes. and you now have your third book. Let's yes. put this one out for a second. Coming out in January. Yes, okay? January 14th. It's January 14th. And we also have, most recently, The Glass Ocean. Mm -hmm. which I'll sound for that it. came out last year. This came out last year. And beautiful cover. Mm -hmm. Like, we really love this. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so the three of you have written three books now yes. at this point. You call yourselves Team W. Right. And you travel with the Unibrain. The Unibrain. Unibrain, mm -hmm. as you write. And the Unibrain is because the three of you will get an idea and incubate it together? It's, yes, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy it, the way we finish each other's sentences. It is absolutely crazy. It's, you know, um, three bodies, one brain. Um, we just, we're always on the same track. It's it's frightening, but um, it, it's a real rush uh, creatively uh, to, to get together with these two other women and, and just create something amazing. Um, and three books. You're yeah. three books in at this point, so it's not just a hobby. It's right. actually become something that people are right. looking for. Right. So how did it start? Were you like just sitting there saying, hey, would this be fun to not write alone? Um, this is funny, but this is true. You know, three three authors walked into a bar. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Love it. And we basically, bottom line, um, we wanted um, uh, a way to um, have a publisher sponsor a girl's trip. Mm -hmm. so. so book tour is the girl's trip. Book tours, the girls' trip, and the plotting trip. You always have these big meetings. Work, what, work, work. Work, 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 work. You know, drink, drink, drink. But work, work, work. It, it is a lot of work. It is yeah. a lot of work because you're starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. Every There's no continuing characters. Mm -hmm. There's no whatever. Mm -hmm. And I interviewed the three of you. When was it? I yes, think I, for Book, book Club uh, Girl. For Book Club Girl, mm -hmm. I think I got one word in edgewise. Sorry, I know. Because they were, we're chatting, chatting so much, mm -hmm. but how do you handle the project? Like you, you go away and come up with the idea and yeah, nurture yeah. the idea. Uh, we 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 do it uh, individually. We do not outline our books. These books you have to outline, mm -hmm. and then we each pick a, a a character in that time period, and then we sit down and we outline together. So we own each character in each story arc. 
Um, so that it's that's why it's so fluid. I think that's why it's so seamless because we own all the characters, mm -hmm. Th regardless of which one we choose to write. And they each choose to write, it, and it's three different time periods. Mm -hmm. and this book. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Because I confess I have not read yet. A oh, little bit. I just I'm in love with this book. And what's really cool is that one of the characters is actually going to be in my 2021 single title. Oh, how fun! So which was really kind of fun. So um, so this is well, okay. So the um, the heiress, the resistance fighter, and the widow. And so we have uh, World War One, World War Two, and 1960s, um, all centered around um, Paris, France, and all centered around um, sort of a, an ancient talisman and a mystery that drags all all three time periods together and all three story arcs together. Um, these three amazing women, all very different. But, um, oh my gosh, I just, I, I'm in love with this book. And I, I can say that because I only wrote a third of it and I can't tell you which one I wrote. But. Yes, and you never tell, they never tell who was writing which character. And you really, I've tried to figure out the last time, but you drop little red herrings in. Right, so but our editors don't get it right in. either. They don't get so, it right no. either, so mm -hmm. I don't have to feel badly. Mm -hmm. um, what's also interesting is you pick these three different time periods, you're all writing together. And you all write differently, yeah. But yet, when you write these books, it is completely fluid. It's and very I harmonious. Am... And you know, uh, Beatrice had an interesting um, idea why that was. Um, we all love music. Like Lauren and I sing. Beatrice is, you know, I play piano. Beatrice mm -hmm. is really into opera. And I think maybe just because we're used to harmonizing and listening to, you know, how different voices have to sort of. Yeah blend together mm -hmm. um, and when we write we write round, round robin so when you know um, when I get it I read the last two chapters from my two you know writing my partners, partners. And, um, and then I start with mine so it just kind of flows from from what they've already laid down so um, I think that's why that we do I mean everybody says it's seamless you cannot tell that a different author wrote one part versus the other no. part. And, and the two books that I've read, I could not tell at all that, you know, Forgotten Room and this, mm -hmm. I could not tell at all that there was something different. I'm really mm -hmm. looking forward yeah, to reading this. Yeah, I think this. you'll really enjoy it. I was on thing. chapter like two, and oh, I was like, I'm you. never gonna get this done, so I don't know if I've gotten uh, something you wrote or not. Okay. So, can't um, tell you. You can't tell me, can't tell me. And that's really the fun part is, the other thing I really love is that there's a lot of competition amongst people. Mm -hmm. And we're, um, talking to the three of you, you are really about empowering each other. Absolutely. And, and I love that. And I do realize that's something very special. I, it's, I don't know if I, there's uh, any other authors I could write there, um, write with. Um, like we, we got a question um, recently, we're um, online, you know, so what do you do when somebody really hates your sent sentence? It's like, well, you know what, we trust each other to write the best that we can so there's, we don't edit each other. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a couple of times when you know, one of us had said, you know, I, I think there needs to be more here. Um, and I'll tell you right now, you know, Lauren was was telling me because in, in, it was a really important chapter. And this was during under a high stress time mm -hmm. in my life mm -hmm. when I really I my brain was just was not firing and they understood they knew mm -hmm. and 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 I knew something was missing. And, you know, sometimes you just need somebody to say, like, she knew that it that it wasn't her job to say you need to do this 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 change that she was just like i just think there needs to be more mm -hmm. and that's all she needed to say and i'm like yeah you're obviously right i knew exactly what had to be done right um you know so that kind of thing because this is our book that's not your part your part your part you know it's 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 not that at all so um um it's just, and yeah, there we have we we joke, you know, we have no conflict. We agree on everything. <laughs> they do. They're joking. Oh yeah, we agree on everything. It's yeah, all going to be it's sad. Uh, it's, it's sad. A, yeah. But you know, but I think I think it's a very big story for young women. Mm -hmm. I think because a lot of times people just see competitors. Oh no, and I 100 percent agree. And it is also it's usually two out of three or something like that. But every time I've heard you guys talking, it is all with that same verve and enthusiasm. But I think it's also comes from the fact that the three of you on your own are all very diligent about your work. So I, nobody's I that, slacking through. I, I think that nobody's has a lot saying, to do with it. I gotta it. pick it up. You right, know? No, absolutely. And and I think um, it's like I, I they keep me on my A game, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's good. I see it only as a positive experience. And I do hope, I think we are, um, you know, a good example to young girls, other women, that women can work together without this, you mm -hmm. know, Cat whatever. Yeah, it, because, and I think um, we don't really have to work very hard to do that. It's just something we 
we appreciate this about our collaboration and we work very hard or we don't have to work very hard but that is our goal is to continue that because that's what makes this such a joy to do mm -hmm. and it is a joy and I think it, it definitely comes across because there's an enthusiasm when you all go out and talk about the books nobody mm -hmm. and a lot of people are complaining about what they're like you know their careers are like and from every one of the three of you I don't get that and I think it's also because you have somebody that you're constantly able to chat with Absolutely. about the business Absolutely. as a collaborator Absolutely. besides just as competitors because so many people just see each other competitors you even have a writing group that you work with on your other books yes and yes. you collaborate with yes, each other and yes. go through stories and I think that it's when you have people that you trust like that it makes a big impact because right. it can make your craft better right no absolutely and, and that's what I tell my agent she's like you know you don't have to be doing these and I'm like but yeah I do <laughs> because I think it, it it just brings some kind of you know look writing is lonely right. sitting in a room when I write the newsletter on Thursday night it's completely lonely and you're constantly making stuff up but here you're Oh wait, this this box is I'm coming. So, I can just do this, and right. I have something started. Right, and um, and Beatrice even said, you know, when you're writing by yourself, you say, well, what if I do this? And this is what you hear: cricket, cricket, cricket. Mm. But when you're doing Team W, it's your text. So what if this? And then, brrr, yeah, our, our text good, good change are good legendary. Yeah. See, and these are the kinds of things. This is the. It's a real lesson to be learned of what you know, writing together. Right. Writing together, but writing differently. Right. Right. Karen, it's always a pleasure. Thank I always you, love chatting Thank with you. you. I love talking to you and I love hearing about it. I think it's very interesting to have somebody who can write standalone series and then another group of books as well. My hack was off. I know Thank it's not you. easy. Thank you. You're but a real hard fun, worker. And I guess it's, I don't know, it keeps me sane. It keeps you sane. <laughs> it keeps you sane. And at least you don't have to go home and just be crafting around the house exactly. or cooking or doing any of those oh, other things yeah. because Washing the I'm dogs. writing. Yeah. It's exactly. Sorry, I can't. Yeah, I can't cook. <laughs> yeah. Can't make dinner tonight. I'm on deadline. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, Carol. It's a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, everyone. And we look forward to seeing you the next time.